to have uh, on young people because you know there's a lot of fascination for the us for obvious reasons uh, many people want to go to study there or immigrate there and all these things but there's no real um, you know uh, structured learning program for them to uh, understand how this relationship has matured and reached this comprehensive strategic partnership level so uh, i want to thank our colleagues from the embassy and from the state department for um, uh, reposing trust in jindal and giving us this grant and we are committed to implementing it and to delivering it at the highest possible quality so uh, and i urge colleagues who have taught in this course uh, to also watch this mooc as it unfolds on coursera uh and uh, i want to also acknowledge the presence of professor ashish bardwaj who's the dean of our uh, banking um, and and uh, finance school but also in charge of all our online programs so degree programs this is of course a non degree program uh but the whole gamut of them um, ashish is spearheading them and uh, online learning has become a you know as you know a big thing for jindal in the last two years we are getting the qs uh, uh, rankings for being the most innovative indian university for digital learning so this is one of in the, i would say a milestone uh, in that journey because degree programs are for very limited number of people because they are for those who are fee paying uh, you know enrolled students but the mooc is for the public and it's not only for our students in fact our students are not uh, uh, taking this course uh, per se it, the, they are from across uh, northern indian states so in a way jindal faculty are teaching students of seven states of northern india um, with the support of the us government so if you just uh, picture what that means uh, fathom what that means it's actually a kind of a you know uh, uh, we we are actually doing capacity building for fellow colleges um, and uh, institutions across northern india uh, via the um, support and encouragement of the us government so i think this is the model we would like to replicate on a bigger scale going forward and uh, it's really been a privilege and honor working with uh, colleagues from the embassy and i want to thank them for being here today for the launch uh, i request uh, michael rosenthal is not a stranger to us he actually delivered our commencement lecture uh, which was virtual because of the pandemic uh, last year and um, it was widely appreciated and it was actually on the bilateral relationship so we are very um, fortunate to have michael here and um, they've come all the way from uh, the diplomatic enclave were two hours away i hope it wasn't longer than that uh, but um, it's worth it and i can tell you that um, we hope that this uh, begins a longer chapter of cooperation with the us embassy because they have a vision they have a public diplomacy vision for uh, enhancing the bilateral relationship by reaching out to the civil society and uh, young people in this country and i believe jindal can be the medium through which that vision can be accomplished or one of the mediums so we are happy to be of service in this uh, sense so it's a great partnership and uh, we hope that this will carry on uh, michael over to you please we would like you to please uh, give us a small keynote about this mooc and and your vision please sure thank you dean chalia uh, thank you for the wonderful introduction for your cooperation with us in this project and for hosting us here today it's really a pleasure uh, to be here myself in person for the first time on the jindal university campus as you mentioned we've interacted virtually a few times before uh, but this chance coming out of the pandemic for all, a number of us to come together in person is really amazing i think it makes a difference but it's also a pleasure to be joined virtually by a number of students and other people as well so i uh, just off the top thank you for uh cooperating with us on this. Um, and I want to talk a little bit more about why we uh, are supporting this project, why we're excited about it, and then offer a few thoughts on US-India relations, sort of the context for this. And if you don't mind, I'd like to say a few words in Hindi first, uh, if that's OK, uh, to practice the language training that I was given. Aaj aapke saath hone ki naranthan ke liye danyavad. Ye merele ek saman janak baat hai. मैं अब अंग्रेजी में बोलूंगा क्योंकि ये ग्लोबल एजुकेशन की भाषा है लेकिन मैं ये भी कहना चाहूंगा कि हिंदी की दुनिया एक और सुंदर और महत्वपूर्ण भाषा है बट नाउ बैक टू इंग्लिश सो थैंक्स 
As you know, uh, or you may be aware, my government has uh, trained a number of us in Hindi, but we've also trained colleagues in Punjabi and Urdu and Telugu and uh, a number of other languages across South Asia as well. This use of US government resources reflects the importance that we attach to relations with India, but also our understanding of the diversity of India today and the South Asian subcontinent. As I mentioned, I've had the opportunity to interact with Jindal University uh, faculty, professors, uh, and students before, but the chance to be here in person and to take part in this launch is really an honor. Uh, such a massive open online course is, uh, I think, emblematic of the globalized world today, the role of education, uh, but certainly the uh, excellence that Jindal University brings with a global perspective. So it's really great to be here today, and in particular to focus on US-India ties and US foreign policy, helping many more people learn about the diversity of the United States and how that connects with India and what that means for the world today. The United States and India have uh, greatly increased ties in the last two decades or so, though building on a long history of cooperation. Today, India does more trade with the United States, does more military exercises with the United States, and sends more students to the United States than to any other country in the world. Yet in my experience, the structured study of the United States in India still has room to grow. And my travels around India, and I've been living in India for about five years now and worked on India for three years before that in the United States, I've only seen a few courses or a few departments dedicated to the study of the United States or centers. On the reverse side in the United States, there's been incredible growth, although building on history of study of India. There's now quite a number of centers and programs and departments around universities in the United States, around think tanks in the United States, government departments, businesses that have a structured study of and engagement with India and South Asia. And so we're pleased to help launch this massive open online course today to help uh, address that, at least in my view, to build on the incredible diversity of ties in India with the United States, what I see is uh, a strong interest in the United States and taking advantage of the expertise, including many people in this room that uh, build on the people to people ties between the United States and India. Therefore, our North India office, which leads engagement with Haryana and other states of North India for the US government through a Mission India Public Diplomacy grant has supported this MOOC and we look forward to hearing more about it today and to seeing it in practice and hope that it can be the basis for more structured study of and understanding of the United States here in India and can be part of uh, Jindal University's global approach to uh, education here. So uh, just what is this relationship between the United States and India? Sometimes we group uh, the aspects of the relationship into five different pillars, and I'm going to talk a bit more about those today. All those mentioned, we refer officially to the U.S.-India relationship as a comprehensive global strategic partnership. For this more means, structured study of and understanding of the... Uh, this means uh, quite a range of cooperation across a range of fields. Uh, but it's in it's in a relationship that we believe matters both to the United States and to India, to individuals into both countries and to the world. We believe is the world's oldest, oldest and largest democracies that our two countries have a special relationship to cooperate and work together, share our experiences, but to bring benefit to uh, the entire world. So uh, the five part pillars that we sometimes talk about are trade and investment, defense, diplomacy and security, energy and the environment health and our current COVID-19 response and people to people ties. So I'll go briefly through those five and then uh, happy to discuss more during the session, look forward to the launch. First on uh, trade and investment, which is originally what brought the United States and India together in the early days of the US Republic in the 1790s, uh, ships started off from the United States to trade with Indians, taking advantage of our comparative advantages in both countries, exchanging goods and motivated the United States to send some of our first diplomats abroad in the world in the 1790s, initially in Kolkata and then later in Madras or Chennai. And so sort of forming the diplomatic partnership or basis for the great relations we have today. 
our economic ties, of course, greatly expanded since then. Uh, and today, as I mentioned, the United States is the number one partner for India as measured in goods and services. And so uh, it's grown over time. Today, uh, the relationship is measured with about $146 billion in goods and services from 2019, including 16% of India's total exports going to the United States. At the same time, Indian uh, firms have invested nearly $13 billion in the United States, supporting over 70,000 jobs. U.S. firms have directly invested, according to one calculation, $42 billion in India, and according to the American Chamber of Commerce, created more than 5 million jobs in India. This U.S. investment has been in e-commerce, aviation, railways, telecommunications, medical devices, heavy equipment, and much more. And much more U.S. investment comes by a third country origin, so it's, of course, as many people know, difficult to measure. But the U.S. investment has come from a range of large firms, but also small and medium-sized enterprises, which is so important to the U.S. economy, uh, and has taken advantage of innovation and entrepreneurship in the United States, but in India as well and also with support from our two governments. In, in 2021, uh, President Joe Biden and Prime Minister Narendra Modi relaunched the US-India Trade, Pol Trade Policy Forum uh, to take advantage and develop our ambitious shared vision for the future of our trade relationship, one that increases prosperity for working people in both countries. In the US experience though, growth and develop does not always happen naturally. It often, trade and investment often flow where markets are open, regulation is light and predictable, and where infrastructure and human capital are strong. That's just one reason why education, such as here at Jindal University, is so important, developing human capital and taking advantage of flow of ideas across countries. The second pillar of the U.S.-India relationship is in diplomacy, defense, and security. Our cooperation in this sphere seeks to create a structured and safe environment that sometimes we refer to as the global rules-based order for both of our countries and the world to grow. This includes diplomatic cooperation, as was seen last week when the U.S. Undersecretary for Political Affairs, Victoria Nuland, visited for consultations with her counterpart, Foreign Secretary Harsh Shringla, uh, to uh, discuss in foreign office consultations a wide range of diplomatic issues, including in multilateral structures across the world. But our defense cooperation, including in trade uh, in the defense sphere, but also uh, military exercises, defense industrial cooperation, is strong as well. Today, uh, US-India trade and defense represents about $20 billion, uh, which is a great uh, investment growth from about zero uh, 20 years ago, and including exports from India of about 500 million in 2019. So it's a two-way flow. The US has recognized India as a major defense partner via the US Congress, uh, recognizing the importance of our ties, and we conduct a wide range of diplomat of military exercises across all of our forces, including uh, joint exercises between our forces so that we can work together to keep our people safe. This uh, partnership also includes counterterrorism partnerships since the United States and India have sadly suffered from terrorism, both and understand the importance of working together on these issues. Our third, uh, third pillar of cooperation is energy and the environment. Uh, given the continued economic growth in both of our countries and the recognition that energy needs will be important to sustain this growth. We've worked together uh, across our private spheres uh, with government support, the nonprofit sector to share ideas, take advantage of our natural resources and develop new technology to support energy growth in both countries across the range of energy sources, including coal, crude oil, natural gas, nuclear power, as well as technology related to clean fossil fuels and new and renewable sources. Today, climate change is a priority for both of our countries, uh, including through cooperation by Special Presidential Envoy for Climate Change, John Kerry, who's worked with Indian counterparts to raise ambitions and share technology and financing to ensure the United States and India are both leaders to address the climate crisis. India has uh, been a leader on its own, including through the International Solar Alliance, which the United States is now a part of, uh, working together on energy storage, renewable energy, and our en government cooperation has advanced through a number of pillars in this field. A fourth aspect of U.S.-India cooperation is health partnership. Of course, during the current COVID-19 pandemic, this has been at the fore for both of our countries, uh, working together to share ideas, best practices, technologies, and a range of fields to keep our people safe. Uh, but it's a long partnership of his, uh, across history between the United States and India. Uh, 
taken advantage of education and innovation in both of our countries between our scientists and our experts, uh, our private companies, including the pharmaceutical field. And it's one that's produced results, including the first rotavirus vaccine developed by US and Indian scientists together. And during the COVID pandemic, we've continued this uh, sharing uh, a range of uh, products, as well as uh, providing financial support, including from the US government, but also from the US Indian diaspora, private companies as well, so that we can both uh, build back better and get through this pandemic together. The fifth pillar of US India relations is people to people ties, which I think is evident in this room with so many uh, American citizens bringing ideas to India and uh, Indians who have studied in the United States, but is seen in US classrooms, US companies, uh, US organizations around the United States as well. Uh, an important element of this is the Indian American diaspora, 4 million people reflected in the Vice President of the United States today as well, but leaders in our education and our private sector and the US military and government who have brought Indian background to uh, strengthen the US society, business and government, and in many ways creating a bridge across the Indo-Pacific region we share. The U.S. has also benefited from uh, Indian students who have been studying in the United States, some of whom have returned to India as well. And we're pleased that uh, today one in five international students in the United States comes from India and that we issue tens of thousands of visas to Indian students to uh, participate in the United States to enrich our culture and our classrooms as well and help grow the bilateral relationship over the long term. As democracies, as we both are, these uh, positive relations between the two countries, the positive views of each other from our people driven by uh, the flows of students and business people, as well as family members across the two countries, is incredibly important for the governments to have a positive view and incentive to work together. So I'm optimistic, and I think uh, my colleagues across the US government are on the future of US India relations. Uh, and it's certainly something that we've seen across the political spectrum in both countries of interest in supporting and developing bilateral ties in both countries. So uh, this is the context that we see today for US India relations, but we look forward to this course, which I think is exciting and sort of a new frontier in education uh, to develop U.S.-India ties. And we look forward to this program today, having more thoughts on it, and to hopefully seeing students who have taken the course become shapers of U.S.-India ties in the days and months and years to come. So thank you for having us today. Thank you. Thank you, bud. Thank you so much, Michael. Now we are going to do the ceremonial launch of this MOOC for which we have all gathered and for which students it's an extraordinary learning opportunity for all the enrolled students. I request Michael, Catherine, uh, Sonal, and the entire embassy team to please uh, do the ceremonial uh, press of a button with which we launch. You know, it's the digital equivalent of um, cutting the ribbon. Um, so, yeah. So here we are. Uh, it's a photo op moment. So. So, Michael, you just press that and we acclaim it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's Hello, students. On behalf of the Jindal School of International Affairs of OP Jindal Global University, I want to welcome you to this special massive open online course on US foreign policy and India-US relations. This is a very important subject uh, for which we are going to train you to understand the domestic context within the US and uh, how that impacts on the US relations with uh, the rest of the world, with a special focus, of course, on India. India-US partnership has been growing with a big uh, strategic uh, partnership that has huge ramifications for world order and for the international system. And uh, understanding India-US relations requires you to uh, know about American history, American economy, culture, society, politics, all of it, the business environment there, and how all of it uh, relates to India and uh, this part of uh, Asia, Indo-Pacific. Why is the US so interested in India? Why are we uh, partnering more and more with uh, the United States? And what binds these two countries together so strongly 
in the third decade of the uh, 21st century. This smoke is being produced uh, with the support of the U.S. Embassy in uh, India and uh, with the U.S. State Department, and they place the highest priority on uh, enhancing understanding of young Indians like you uh, about their country and about what the U.S. is doing in India, in Asia, and in the Indo-Pacific. So, first few uh, lectures of this course, you are going to be learning more about the domestic context, about American. Uh, society and economy, polity, all those things. And then we move towards understanding the US foreign policy, how it has evolved historically. Some of our topmost scholars, many of whom are Americans themselves, are teaching in this course. Uh, and uh, then towards the later half of the course, you start uh, learning about US India relationship and how it has moved from it used to be estranged at one time, and now it has become really an enduring or a defining partnership for the 21st century. So I hope you all enjoy this course and more importantly, learn about the US, learn about the importance of the US and about uh, why uh, India-US partnership is really going to change the world. It's, it's, it's already impacting on our lives, our um, way of thinking, our approach to foreign relations and to uh, Asia itself is now increasingly being driven by our partnership with the US. So how do these two big democracies of the world come together and how do they make a difference? How do they change the world? That's something I hope that you'll all uh, understand by going through this course. So once again, welcome and uh, happy learning. I did it in one take for your information. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So the launch, the course is officially launched. So dear students, um, it's for all of you now. And uh, this is going to be an interactive one. We're going to have some live sessions as well. Uh, faculty who are teaching in this course will be engaging with students as they learn week after week. Uh, it's a very unique thing and it's on Coursera, the number one global online uh, learning platform. So nothing bigger than this. Um, I now request uh, Professor Ashish Bharadwaj, the Dean of our banking school and the head of our online programs to please uh, uh, give his remarks. Well, thank you, Sriram. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for being here today. Um, I was thinking what to add to what you've already shared in person, in the video, what Michael has already shared with all of us. I've written a few things down. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. The, the message that I've gathered so far is that India, US um, uh, is, is perhaps one of the most consequential relationships of the century. And there are many different ways of looking at it. Perhaps that's why it's an important and integral part of the foreign policy of the two nations. Um, it's, uh, it's very interesting that last year in fall, in, in August uh, 2021, we had a commencement lecture at the School of Banking and Finance, which was delivered by Dr. Richard Verma. Uh, Richard was, of course, the former ambassador of, uh, of the US to, United, to, to India. Uh, he's now with MasterCard. Uh, and um, Richard said a few very interesting things that I want to relay here. Um, some of the things, oh. Michael, you've already covered. Uh, you really helped us connect the dots uh, uh, in this uh, US-India relationship spectrum through the five pillars that you articulated. Um, Richard reminded us about uh, the, the, the visit of the first US president to India in 1959, President Eisenhower, I believe. Uh, and he was interacting with children at the U.S. Embassy in Delhi. And he asked them a question that, how do you think the world is going to be in 2019? I don't know why he chose 2019 back in 59. 16. Yeah. And, 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 and his response at the end was that if India and the U.S. are working closely, then, then I believe children in the U.S. and in India will have a, a better and a brighter future. This was back in 1959. Relatively more recently, about 15 years ago, Richard added, uh, uh, Senator Biden, who is now, of course, the president, um, he, he said famously that if in the year 2020, uh, India and US uh, continue to be close friends and, and partners, then the world is going to be a safer place and a more prosperous place to live in. I think these are very important words uh, that, that Richard shared. Uh, and it, it kind of underscores the importance of the partnership that both Michael and Sri Ram have articulated. My, my own area of work um, is intellectual property rights, tech innovation. 
Uh, we are in fact doing a conference tomorrow that I was telling Michael, Catherine and others about just a few minutes uh, uh, earlier. The uh, reason why I'm mentioning this is uh, in this conference where we are commemorating 110 years of the Indian Patent Office, we are trying to understand what really happened of the MOU that was signed between the Indian Patent Office and the US Patent Office about one year ago, uh, because there are so many different areas of collaboration and some of them are, uh, you touched upon in your address, Michael, uh, of technical, uh, technological exchange, uh, uh, tech cooperation in many different forms. Um, there is a lot that the U.S. needs to learn, that India needs to learn in how to approach the issues of creativity, innovation, intellectual property. Both countries, people and societies in both our nations have a very different understanding of, um, um, uh, of how to really treat uh, intellectual property. Uh, there is global consensus largely on how it should be, how it must be. Uh, TRIPS and WTO kind of tell us what to do about it globally. But still, there is a difference in how it is being approached by companies, by individuals, by governments. So that's a very important area, um, uh, among others, to, to uh, collaborate and partner. So I hope, uh, and I know that uh, tech is one of the courses in this MOOC, uh, which I think Ram is going to be teaching. Um, and it's going to be a very, very interesting uh, module in this MOOC to talk about uh, uh, technology adoption and the role of IP in further strengthening technological advancement globally, not just in telecom, automobile, and space, but across industries. It also touches upon something very interesting, which happened relatively recently. Last month, I believe White House released a fact sheet on Indo-Pacific strategy and India's seminal role, um, not just in the region uh, in terms of security, safety, peace, but also uh, in, in health, space, uh, uh, pharmaceutical, industry, medical devices, um, energy, as you articulated, Michael. So um, I know that this course, uh, which JSIA is offering, touches on many of these aspects uh, and more. Um, so I'm, I'm quite confident that it's going to be uh, very, very attractive uh, with students around the world. JSIA, of course, is the first graduate school in India to combine three very interesting topics together. And I'm surprised that no other institution did it before JSIA. The three topics of international business, international law, and international relations. That's what the world is and, and globalization is about now. And JSIA uh, uh, has been delivering a phenomenal master's program in diplomacy, law, and business, the first of its kind, for last 10 years. In fact, JSIA completed 10 years of this program uh, last year. And the fully online masters that, that JSIA is offering since fall last year on international relations, safety, and security is also uh, one of its kind. And I'm very happy to share that the program already has 100 students, more importantly, from 30 countries around the world. Uh, and, and US India relations. Uh, and the foreign policies of both the countries are one of the many modules of this particular online program. Um, the school has a phenomenal uh, uh, faculty group. Some of them are present here in the room. Um, there are about 14 faculty members who are teaching uh, this MOOC on US foreign policy and India-US ties. Um, what's interesting to me is that there are six different schools of JGU that are represented by faculty members who are teaching this MOOC. So there is, we, we, we are very serious about the interdisciplinarity and the multidisciplinarity aspects, uh, even in, in a non-degree offering uh, like this certificate program. Um, I want to end by congratulating uh, Sriram, uh, Rajdeep, uh, the engines of the program, but everyone who's uh, played a role in, in recording lectures, in, in interacting with participants uh, going forward. And I want to congratulate and thank the, uh, our partners at the U.S. Embassy for supporting JSI in this venture. All the best. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Bhardwaj. Yes, uh, it's a collective effort and uh, multi to, to use a World Bank type job. It's a multi-stakeholdership model for delivering high quality learning. Um, Last but not least, before we close the ceremony, I want to request my colleague, Professor Rajdeep Paknadi to share his thoughts. He has been, like I said, uh, really a workhorse and has made this happen. So um, words will not suffice for the amount of uh, effort that's gone into this. So it's all Rajdeep and now he's got a team under him that's delivering this MOOC uh, to our wonderful, all the uh, enrolled students. Rajdeep, last word. 
Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, I, if you can indulge me for a minute, I wanted to show everyone the interface that a student will look at uh, to get, I think, a better context also. Uh, this is uh, the launch video uh, is something that they start off, but I think it would be useful. So I'll request our team member to just move it and I'll just show it again. So uh, just like you can look at the preview of demo, this is what a student is looking at when they enroll. Uh, and after watching uh, the introductory video, uh, they will go to watch a video where I introduce myself uh, in lieu of, uh, you know, uh, for all of the inst 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 uh, instructors I'll be talking. And then say, uh, this would be uh, the course has now gone live. So at 12 p.m., the material and content for module one, which is for scheduled for week one, is now live. And I think I should do a refresh of it. So it should be, the student should be able to view what they, so there you go. This would be the Professor Michael Davis, uh, this module is the first one. And so the material and content will be available to students. Let's, let's see and one the, minute of Michael's uh, introduction. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to this module on the US constitutional system and its impact around the world. We're going to open up in this set, section first with a brief introduction of myself, and then I'll get into some of the substance. When it comes to myself, actually, I, I can suggest actually the easiest way may be simply to Google me and look at my Wikipedia page. So Michael C. Davis. Uh, and you'll find a Wikipedia page on, online and you can get some of my background, the kinds of work I do on human rights, civil liberties, and so on, which is, I think, amply described in, in there. I think for our purposes here at the Jindal Global University, it's important to highlight how I met the vice chancellor of the university, Professor Raj Kumar, that he actually originally began his career, as many of you know, in Hong Kong. And his professor at Harvard had told him that when he got to Hong Kong to look me up, I was a professor there. Uh, I, I had started my own life in, in Hawaii uh, as a lawyer and, and then had gone back to some graduate school and eventually after a lot of study wound up as a uh, professor of international human rights at, at a university in Hong Kong. So anyhow, Raj, uh, looked me up and I recall the day he knocked on my door and think, you know, I, little did I know the imp if I can constitution you know. that, that are in many cases content. repeated uh, and refined in certain ways in India. And then we'll have some discussion uh, specifically on India and looking at how these various concepts are used and shaped in India. There are both similarities and differences that we'll want to explore. Then finally, in this module, we'll take a look beyond both the United States and India to our region to look at at least briefly how other countries in the region have tried to copy this liberal democratic model with either success or failure. And, and so we'll have a chance to look at that. Um, so the, for the convenience of our time, you know, I'll pause it there. And uh, so now that the course is available for students, I also it could be an announcement for them that it's uh, online. So I'll just uh, conclude. Um, I will have to uh, use this opportunity to thank you know the many people who have helped me uh, to bring this MOOC to life. Uh, first, you know uh, all my esteemed colleagues because they uh, draw on their immense expertise, and they might have even suffered my you know different kind of requests to transition their pedagogy to teach online, uh, and more specifically without all the um, um, uh, all kind of interruptions and produce high quality videos. Um, Professor Michael Davis has been kind enough to do it from his home in New York uh, at midnight because New York is always loud. So he tried to find the you know, calmest moment. Um, uh, so I, I have to uh, thank every uh, one to uh, uh, have worked. And uh, it's been uh, also a learning experience for us to transform our pedagogy. 
uh, which is more in terms of you know meeting in a classroom. Um, the second, I also wanted to uh, put uh, on record uh, uh, thanks uh, for the team from SkillUp, which is our contractual partner, to help us produce really high quality content. Um, uh, and they've done an excellent job in training us and guiding us in the nitty gritty of these things. Um, I also specifically uh, have to appreciate uh, Ms. Shobhana Srivastava, who's the team leader there, along with uh, Ms. Rashi Kapoor, uh, Ms. Ashima Amar, and uh, Ms. Harmandeep Kaur. Uh, third, uh, I would like to highlight uh, that uh, with the efficient guidance of uh, our JGU studio manager, uh, Mr. Shai Dali, uh, you know, we were able to learn uh, uh, on recording uh, and we used teleprompters which seem to also sometimes malfunction, but none of that happened for us. Um, and uh, uh, also uh, Mr. Sunit Pandit, uh, who is uh, here in the, um, uh, behind the camera here, uh, guided us in, the, uh, in each of those sessions. Uh, I also want to appreciate uh, uh, the course assistant, Mr. Uh, Zeus Hans Mendes, who's a, a BA Global Affairs graduate from our school, uh, and who's been assisting me in, in uh, getting the material for the content or preparing quizzes, et cetera. Um, and finally, uh, I would like to thank the university administration, uh, especially our Dean, Professor Sriram Cholia, and our Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor Raj Kumar, uh, who have created uh, an environment to encourage faculty to design innovative programs like this MOOC. So uh, with, I think in such a uh, welcoming environment, you know, we are able to take uh, a chance to expand our horizons, our training, and also offer uh, new and innovative programs. So uh, thank you very much, uh, everyone. And with this, uh, I'll pass on. Thank you. thank you thank you rajdeep well done hard work always matters um, tangible and intangible ways we really appreciate your uh, contribution we have um, so just to let you all know we have um, 113 students enrolled so far in this uh, program in this mooc um, from I'll, i'm reading out the states bihar Chandigarh, Delhi, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, uh, Kerala. Kerala is, is not in North India, but yeah, there, there are some interested young people there. Maharashtra, again, not in Northern India, but it's in Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, with the largest uh, contingent of uh, students, uh, and even one from Telangana. That's interesting. So we should do this, uh, make it this a pan-India thing. I, I know the North India office is here, but you should let the uh, other regional offices know that uh, we are also helping their cause indirectly. <laughs> 11 more have joined. So yeah, so we have around 125 now approximately enrolled in this program. I urge all the students to take this very seriously uh, and to learn and not to uh, consider this as um, something um, um, secondary. I know you have your uh, classes and your regular courses for your degree program. But I can assure you that learning this, after learning this, your uh, eyes will open and your perspective to the US and to India, and you get a bigger sense of your own aspirations may be tied to studying in the US or uh, working in US companies or something like that. But how does that fit into the larger scheme of things? That's the purpose of this course. No? So uh, we want you to be uh, not just uh, technically skilled or knowledgeable in your respective disciplines, but also to understand how US-India relations enable your own career pathways and your own growth, intellectual growth. So uh, best wishes to all the students and uh, thank you to colleagues for being here and really appreciate all your contributions. Uh, we are breaking for lunch now. Thank you. Ah, let me honor uh, colleagues from the embassy in the traditional Jindal way, please. If you uh, bear with us for a minute. <laughs>